Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Karo Itoje. I'm a real estate consultant in Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Talk with Karo. Of course, I bring you this series in order to inform you, to educate you on real estate matters so that when you're looking to invest, you're able to make a wise decision. There are a lot of you out there that started real estate with bad experiences because of not knowing better. This is why I started this series. I, I don't just come here to bring you properties to get you to buy, but at the same time, my priority here is to inform you, to educate you, so that you don't lose your hard-earned money when you, you know, when you make real estate investments. You make real estate investments because you're trying to plan for your future. You're trying to have something on the ground. You're trying to, um, you know, bank your wealth. You're not trying to lose money. So. That's why I bring you this series. So welcome to another episode of the series. Um, today, I'm going to quickly talk about something that I introduced to you people without actually telling you people about it, which is um, the title called Free Mode. It's not actually a title. I've talked a whole lot about um, the different titles, land titles that we have, and I'm still surprised that um, there are a number of you out there that think that it is seen for nothing at this stage. You know, if you really don't understand land titles, then I encourage you to go see um, on some of my videos. At least two or three of my videos have dedicated it to explain what the different land titles are. Now, freehold, freehold, as I've said, is not a title. I'm going to tell you about what it is later. But the reason I decided to talk about this is because some time ago, um, it's more than a month now or two. Well, I brought, um, I introduced an estate here, Clinton Estates in Del Mi Ibejeleki, and um, I said in the video that it has, it had freehold, that it doesn't have a title, but it had freehold, and a lot of you were confused. Even some took it so far, like don't introduce lands that doesn't have title to us. There's nothing like CFO in process. This, that, that, that. Even though I didn't say CFO in process, I actually said. Um, the company was going to process a CFO for it, but at that point in time, the land was under what is called freehold. And it was my fault, really, because I had not talked about freehold at all, what it was about. Even though in that video, I did try to explain, I explained a lot what that, what freehold meant, but I, it was as if a lot of people still didn't get it. So in this video, I want to talk about I want to explain what field is. It's actually very straightforward. It's it's not going to be, you know, um, long or overwhelming to digest. Now, free old. When you say a land, maybe some of you, I'm sure some of you have come across an estate um, that was said to have field, and you probably didn't understand what they meant. Now, freehold, a land is said to have freehold when the land is not under any government acquisition. We've talked about land titles before, like I've said, and I've explained that we have two types of acquisition. We have um, the global acquisition or general acquisition, and then we have um, the committed. When you say, oh, a land is committed to the government, you understand? Now, the global acquisition or general acquisition, that's where accession in process comes in. Global acquisition is trying to tell you that, hey, this land, although not committed for a purpose, you know, but we are interested in it, that's the government now. You do know that um, every land, in, based on our land laws in Nigeria, every land is owned by the government. Every land is a property of the government. That's where title comes in. That's where it all plays in. Now, CFO is saying, oh, the government is giving you right to a land for 99 years. That's what CFO is about, right? Now, we now have um, general acquisition. When they say, okay, land is under general acquisition. Now, if a land is under general acquisition, it's simply saying that, as I've said, this land is not committed, but government is interested in it. So it is not free, but it is not committed. Yeah? Now, such lands could be released from the government through a process known as excision. So when you see a land that is said to have its excision in process, they are telling you that right now, that land is under what is known as general acquisition, you know, or government acquisition. There are different ways they phrase it. Government acquisition, general acquisition, global acquisition. Now, that land at that state can be released through a process known as a session 
or regularization, a different word for it. That's why you see lands where it is said to have a session in process, a session in process and all that. Now, a lot of you that have been following me here for a while now, you know that I don't sell such lands. I stay away from such lands. When I started my career, I used to sell such lands. That was before I knew better. You know, because the, the information we had there was that, okay, um, a session in process, there's no problem. They just apply for it and it comes out. No problem, nothing, no stress. You know, and then we were made to believe that there was no decision that has been applied for that was not approved, which is not true. You know, so I, I, the more I, I remained in the industry, the more I knew better, the more I stayed away. You know, when you know better, you do better. I decided to stay away from such lands. Now, um, when I now brought you a land that didn't have a title, but I was trying to convince you that, oh, yeah, it's good. I mean, some of you may have gotten confused, even though I did, as I've said, I did try to explain what it was about. Now, Freehold is telling you that this land is not under any of the two acquisitions. It's not under general acquisition, neither is it committed. It's especially not committed, and it's not under any general acquisition. What that means is that even though Freehold in itself is not a title, get that clear, it's not a title. It is to describe the state of the land at that point in time. They're trying to tell you that, oh, this land is not under any of the acquisitions, meaning there's no government interest on it, but it still doesn't have a title. You get. Now, remember that title came into play because of the government involvement, because all lands belong to the government. Now, they're saying that this land is not under any acquisition. What that means is that to process CO4 for it will be very easy and it is a breeze. Do you get. That's what he's saying, you know. So when I bring you a land that didn't have, um, it didn't have a precession, it didn't have a gazette, it didn't have CFO, I knew what I was doing. I, I was not trying to change my person. I was not trying to force something down your throat. I was not trying to convince you that something that was not good, something that I didn't want to sell before. Now nah, I want to sell it, so I'm trying to package it properly. No, look into free old lands. Free old are lands that are very safe to process CFO on. Now keep in mind that it is not everybody that can afford lands that have CO4. Somebody was even saying under the comments for that video that, um, okay, what if you don't process the land doesn't have CO4? That means anybody can just come and process CO4 for it. That's true. But not just anybody. Anybody that bought the land, anybody that buys such land can process CO4 for it. That's, that's what it means. You get now, when you buy a land that has free hold, and you're wondering, doesn't this mean that anybody can possess CO4 for the land? How does the ownership? Because that's what the person was trying to say in the comments. How do I prove ownership? CO4 is not what proves your ownership. Your deed of assignment is what proves your ownership. Now, if you've um, watched one of the videos that I did in one of this series, I said that deed of assignment is like the most important document in a land transaction, your deed of assignment. Because your deed of assignment is what shows change of ownership. Is what is going to say, ah, Mr. John, who used to own land at so and so address, has now sold the land, transferred his ownership to Mr. So and so. CFO cannot be transferred. Now, when you buy a land that has CFO, I've said it before. If you buy a land that has CFO, it is simply saying you are protected from the government and all that. It's still saying that the government has given you a right to own the land. However, that CFO is not in your name, right? This is an opportunity to remind you of this thing. That CFO is not in your name. So you're still going to get that CFO, and CFO is not transferable based on our land laws. CFO is not transferable. So to get that CFO in your name, you're still going to have to go through the process of getting a governor's consent. Because two of, um, because CFO cannot be obtained twice on same land, so you have to, anybody that comes after a C of has been done on the land has to go and do what's known as governor's consent. Basically, just registry or deed of assignment, and the governor stamps it, the governor of the state stamps it or signs it or whatever. That's what that's how you get your governor's consent. So it's your deed of assignment that becomes your government governor's consent. So when you are buying the land, and um, especially you people that are buying from private owners, and the owner, suppose owner of the land. Um, it's telling you uh, the land just has receipts. It just has receipts and survey. 
don't fall for it. A land need a land needs a you know a deed of assignment to prove ownership. It is your deed of assignment that is going to prove your ownership of the land. It's not the sea of folk. So let's get that clear. A free old land, free old land are very safe to buy. And when I brought that estate to you, I did make clear that you should make sure to do a search on it and confirm that it actually has free old. Because it is easy for anybody to say, hey, the land has free old. I made it clear that personally I did not share the land if it actually has free old. But they will not state free old if it didn't have free old. But that you should share and confirm and make sure that the land had free old. And I was going to, you know, the plan was that if I if people were interested in it because the reason I brought you that estate was because it was affordable much more affordable than the millions millions would call and it's realistically it's not everybody that can afford them which is why even though I, I do these videos and I try to um, um, tell a lot of you to stay away from a session in process land and I explain the dangers the risk that is involved when you buy these lands that have a session in process because I have them myself so I'm in the best position to tell you and I'm in the industry I can tell you that, hey, it is very risky to buy lands that have a session in process. Even at that, as I've said before, some of you cannot afford it. You know, they, you can't afford those ones that are more expensive. And if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. So because of that, people still ignore the warning and still go for lands that have a session in process. Which was why I brought that free old, that instead of buying lands that have a session in process, buy free old. Free old, no problem with it. It's, it's a land that has no problem with the government and you can go and process your title. Now let's get this clear. Even though you buy a land that has CFO, you will still need to process a title for it. You will still need to perfect a title. Either if you buy a land that has free wood, then you will just need to do CFO. If you buy a land that already has CFO, then you will just need to perfect your title at the end of the day. If you want to sell your land, transfer your land to another person, then maybe you don't worry about perfecting your title if it already has a title, right? You just sell it like that. But any land, anybody buying a land that intends to build on that land, I will not, considering the cost it takes to build on a land, I will never recommend that you build on a land without perfecting the title. You want to make sure everything that has to do with the ownership of that land, as it relates to government, as it relates to the transfer, it's already, everything is already confirmed to be in your name before you start spending millions to build on the land. You understand? If a land has C or four, the government is not going to come and disturb you because it's not a land under the government. However, if you want to transfer it to another person, you might need the person that has the C or four, you know, the person that possesses that C or four to sign off on it because it is not, the C or four is not in your name, so it is not all yours to transfer. You get so you might want to see so i hope everything that i've explained is clear so far um i think that's about everything i want to say somebody said under the comments on the video i'm referring to that oh there's nothing like c of o in process actually there's actually um something known as c of o in process getting a title is a process that you go through different stages you know, so when you are processing, when you've started, when they, all this process, process you keep hearing about, yes, it means that we've started this process. If you go to Alausa and go and check the status of the land, you will see that we've started the process. You know, that's what process is all about. There's something called your point process. There's something called decision in process. You get. So let's let's understand this thing so that when we when we speak, we we know that we we understand what we're talking about. If you don't understand, again, if you don't understand land titles, you just uh, go through my videos, you see some of them, just go through them. Maybe, maybe I'll do a playlist where I put um, similar videos that talk about the same topic, um, related topics together, so that when you go to a playlist in my YouTube channel here, yeah, you'll be able to see them. Now that reminds me, if you've not subscribed to my channel, you want to make sure you subscribe. Click the subscribe button, click the all, and then you'll be subscribed. That's it. So that when I bring you videos like this, and sometimes I bring you very time-sensitive offers, you know, um, especially when an estate just launches, either it's a land or houses, um, the launch price is always very different. It comes at a discounted amount um, that if you wait for, you know, much later to buy into the estate. So you, when, you, when you 
subscribe to my youtube channel and you'll be here to immediately I upload the video you get a notification of it and you can come immediately and watch it if there's an urgent information you'll be one of those that quickly you know you get the opportunity to tap into it if it, it might just be what you're looking for at that point in time so subscribe 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 i hope the 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 term free or declare is it safe for you to buy a land that has free hold 110 percent it is safe for you to buy a land that has free hold however when you buy a land that has free hold you want to get um yourself a lawyer uh, once the land has been allocated to you you want to get yourself either a lawyer or somebody that knows surveyor that knows um how to process a cfo and process of a cfo for the land immediately immediately so that's it um for this episode of real estate talk with carol thank you so much for watching and staying to the end of this video again subscribe if you've not subscribed it's been a pleasure bringing you these videos and um until i come your way again my name is carol so jay bye for now